Where is the moderate Muslim? That's the million dollar question that I've been asked since the 9-11 terror attacks. Uh, we're apparently an endangered species like the humpback whales in the 80s. Uh, we don't exist. Apparently we live in Narnia and drink uh, eggnog chai with Elvis. Growing up, you know, I never looked in the mirror and said, I am a Muslim American, the son of Pakistani immigrants. I looked in the mirror and said, I really wish I could lose weight. And the cheerleaders would look at me and Brett and Chad would invite me to their parties. They never did. And so being a Muslim right now, I'm supposed to be a default expert and a cultural ambassador of 1.7 billion people in 1400 years of Islamic civilization and on the drop of the dime. I am supposed to be an expert on Islam, Quran, Sharia, Hakim Olajuwon, Fatah, Fatwas, Hamas, Hamas, like everything in between. And you know, this, this whole concept of the moderate Muslim is so uh, damaging because the assumption is that by virtue of being Muslim or self-identifying as a Muslim, you're not moderate. You're an extremist, you're radical, you're anti-American. You know, people say, why are you minorities always so angry? Well, step in our shoes for a second. And, and you'd be angry too. In fact, there's a lot of folks who are very wealthy white men on talk radio who are angry for no reason despite being in the top 1%. So these are some of the challenges, but it's also an opportunity because for the first time I'm witnessing is that America is looking to Muslims to be the protagonist of the American narrative. My friend Hassan Minaj uh, was chosen to be the White House Correspondents uh, Entertainment Dinner where he roasted uh, Donald Trump. Riz Ahmed, another buddy of mine, uh, wins Emmy for best actor in a TV series. You see Ibtahaj Muhammad take home the bronze, a black Muslim woman who wears hijab. And I got two babies who are very cute and caramel mocha skinned. And I'll be damned if I tell them, oh, your only legacy is that you will be a victim who will suffer. So just rage at the clouds and do nothing. I say Allahu Akbar, God is great. Thank you, Trump administration, because you inspired and rallied and pissed off so many Americans who were dejected who felt disenfranchised, and you're seeing people take to the streets, you're seeing people go to the polls, you're seeing people run for office, you're seeing people bum rush the media and Hollywood and say, you know what, it's time that I'm represented in front of the camera and behind the camera. And this is an exciting moment. You're seeing the rise of something called the multicultural coalition of the willing. Saying, you know what, I'm willing to carry your water. Can you carry mine? I'm a dreamer. I'm gonna stand up for Black Lives Matters. Can you guys stand up for immigrants? Can you guys stand up for women? Can you guys stand up for Muslims? Muslims, can you stand up for the LGBT? Can you guys stand up for the poor? Can we stand up for affordable healthcare, rising wages, decency? I don't know, facts. And you see a majority of people say, yeah. And the reason why this is an American problem is because they go after the Muslims and they went after the undocumented. And then if you were paying attention, they went after Chicago violence, which is code word for black people. And then they went after the Jews and they went after women. And so now they're going after anyone who criticizes the administration. So you're fake news, or if you don't applaud for Trump, you're treasonous. I gotta do this for my kids and the generation that's coming up because we're witnessing the death rattle and death march of white supremacy, and they're playing for all the marbles. They ain't gonna go down without a fight. If you think they are, you're not paying attention.